my colleagues uh, Nuri Martinez and Paul Kikorian. Um, we have an action-packed agenda. Again, invite you to fill out a card if you'd like to have a comment. Oh, sir. Um, if there are no objection, members, we're going to move items 8 through 18 on consent. 8 through 18 on consent. That will be the order. Pardon? Yes, all the bids. <clears throat> and next up, we've got a panel of four very qualified individuals nominated to serve on the Los Angeles Convention and Exhibition Center Authority Commission. Let me invite you up to the table. Richard, La Richard Lehner, Martin Cooper, Jason Stewart, and Dennis Hernandez. From previous conversations, gentlemen, it's uh, come to my attention that you are all gluttons for punishment, uh, hence your willingness to serve. We do appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Clerk, do we need to say anything to bring them up? I'll, I can read the, the names into the record. Um, for item number one is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Richard Liner to the Los Angeles Convention and Exhibition Center Authority Commission for the term ending January 16, 2017. Item number two is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Martin Cooper to the Los Angeles Convention and Exhibition Center Authority Commission for the term ending January 16, 2015. Item number three is communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Jason Seward to the Los Angeles Convention and Exhibition Center Authority Commission for the term ending January 16, 2017. And item number four, number four is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Dennis Hernandez to the Los Angeles Convention and Exhibition Center Authority Commission for the term ending January 16, 2015. Okay, thank you. Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you just to make a brief uh, one or two minute comment about uh, your background, your interest in serving, uh, what you see the challenges are, and, and uh, uh, afterwards, uh, my colleagues may have some questions for you. Uh, Mr. Seward, why don't we begin with you, sir? Absolutely. Well, thank you pull so the, much. Pull the microphone uh, up. Uh, absolutely. Is that better? Much better. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chairman Price, uh, distinguished council member <laughs> serving on the committee. Uh, my name is Jason Seward. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. Uh, let me begin by saying I look forward to working with you. Uh, this convention center commission is very important to me. Uh, as you know from looking at my background that you have before you, all I know is public service. Uh, I was born into this and um, have served primarily um, at the county level, but working with the city. Uh, I come from the administration of County Supervisor Yvonne Burke, uh, served in her administration for almost 10 years where I advised her on various uh, areas of public policy, including uh, homelessness, housing, economic development, education, public social services, county libraries, as well as the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, which is also a joint powers authority. Um, in that capacity, I also advised her on budgetary matters impacting those various departments, along with constituent services impacting uh, South Los Angeles, South Bay cities, and beyond. Um, in that experience, I gained a great deal of experience with not only understanding how uh, constituent services operate, but how public policy, effective public policy, impacts the constituency to which you serve. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, I also have a large background in philanthropy. I think that's very important when you consider where we are with the Convention Center right now and where it hopes to be. Uh, when you look at its competitive nature and where you want it to be with regard to San Diego, San Francisco, and some of the others, uh, there's going to have to be accountability, creativity, um, assessment in terms of having an ability to look at what others are doing in the region, what they're not doing, and how we can uh, learn from best practices. Um, and I think I bring all of that to the table. I also have an extensive background in community engagement. I think that's important. Uh, traditionally, I don't know the extent to which it has been done, but one of the things that I'll prioritize <coughs> is engaging the community every step along the way to make sure that even with regard to upgrades, maintenance, operations, that every stakeholder has a seat at the table with regard to minority businesses, small businesses, uh, block clubs. Everybody has a, 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 some stake in the game, and I think we need to make sure that the, that the development and the forward advancement of the Convention Center reflects just that. And so I'm looking forward to working with you and certainly look forward to addressing any and all questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. We've been joined by our colleague, 
uh, Councilman Jose Huizar. Uh, Mr. Huizar, thank you for being here with us. Uh, next up, Mr. Richard uh, Lehner. Hi. Thank you for inviting me to this meeting. Uh, my background has been in. Uh, Hello, Mike. Thank you. My background has been in marketing and finance. I spent 15 years on Wall Street. Since then, I've been on the uh, commercial real estate broker in the city. I'm very involved in the community. I just served eight years on the North Valley Area Planning Commission, and my term ended in June. Uh, I have a strong background in, in nonprofits. I chair a group called the Child Development Institute, and I co chair New Directions for Youth which I think both uh, Nuri and, and Paul are, are involved in in some way. Uh, I've been very active in the community for a number of years. I chair the Business Improvement District for Encino, and I note on here that there's, uh, uh, we're up for an okay today on that as well. I'm looking forward to this. It's a, a new area for me, but I've been involved in the community for since I'm, I moved here in 1978. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Chairman Price. Uh, my entire career has been in the arenas of tourism and economic development. I began by being the advertising and promotion manager at Disneyland, where I used to travel with Walt Disney. And I was on the very first planning committee for what was to become the Orange County, the Anaheim Convention Center. Uh, this is back in the 60s. Um, from there, I became director of marketing for Universal Studios, doing all of the uh, marketing for the Universal Studios tour. And then I followed that by a 10-year stint in charge of public relations for the Motion Picture Academy and the Academy Awards, and seven years uh, in charge of public relations for the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Association. Uh, since opening my own marketing and communications firm, we've had a number of uh, municipalities, including the city of Carson and the city of Santa Barbara, where we worked on economic development activities for them. Um, like Richard, I'm very active in the community. I've been the chairman of VICA, Valley Industry and Commerce Association, on the Board of Governors of the Economic Alliance of the San Fernando Valley, president of the Encino Chamber of Commerce, and involved with a number of nonprofits. So I, too, am looking forward to the opportunities and the challenges uh, that we face and we have before us. And I think uh, uh, with the change relationship or changing relationship with AEG, we have some interesting waters to form and uh, I'm look forward, looking forward to being one of the people who rows the boat. Thank you. Good. You didn't mention your involvement with the Playboy Jazz Festival. Thank you. <laughs> um, I uh, worked at Playboy for uh, four and a half years. I was Senior Vice President of Marketing and Communications, and while I was there, I started the Playboy Jazz Festival, which still goes on the third weekend of June at the Hollywood Bowl. Um, I'll conclude by saying I'm the only person in the history of mankind who has ever reported directly to Walt Disney and Hugh Hefner. <laughs> <laughs> and live to tell it. Mr. 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 Hernandez, Chair, that, that, sorry. that does beg the question, who was it better to work for? <laughs> Sometimes discretion is the better yeah, part of value. It was more fun, right? Although I will tell you that I'm working on a book to be published after neither of them are with us in terms of how similar the two were, surprisingly. Mr. Hernandez. I'm going to have to get to know this guy. That's, 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 that's a real benefit here. Um, good afternoon. Thank you, Chairman Price, and uh, good afternoon to members of the council. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the mayor for the opportunity to serve on this commission. Um, it, it's an honor, uh, and uh, I, I hope to be a contributing member. Uh, my background is uh, I've been practicing law for, uh, I think it's now going on uh, 250 years, or it seems that way. Um, uh, I started out uh, working uh, in Washington, D.C., and came back to uh, Los Angeles to work for the city attorney's office. Uh, I've since been working for different law firms uh, in a variety of areas, uh, uh, intellectual property, uh, labor, um, and these days if I hear an a ambulance going by, my ears go up. Uh, so. Um, uh, anyway, my, my, my background is diverse in, in the practice of law, and I hope I can bring the, my talents and experience uh, to the commission. Uh, I most recently served as, uh, uh, on the Housing Authority, as the commissioner for the Housing Authority. Um, and there, my issue, my passion, my focus was how do we create jobs for uh, the members of the, uh, 
the residents of, of the Housing Authority and for the uh, people of the City of Los Angeles. And I think that's the issue that I want to focus on uh, on this commission. I want to know and understand how uh, the Convention Center can be an economic driver as well as uh, a catalyst for the lives of the, uh, the, the people of the City of Los Angeles. Uh, I also hope to be a resource to the members of this uh, committee and the uh, council, so please, uh, anything I could do, let me know. Thank you. Well, I think it's clear that uh, you all four represent a certainly a broad, diverse background of skill, experiences, and commitment to the city, and I think the uh, mayor has made a wise uh, choice in selecting you. Uh, members, are there any questions at this time? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me just reiterate your uh, last comment because uh, uh, these are four exceptional candidates for a very critical job for Los Angeles right now. I've had the pleasure of working closely with Mr. Lehner, Mr. Cooper, both business, prominent business leaders uh, in the San Fernando Valley. Um, I read your book, by the way, Martin, the North of Mulholland, and it's Thank a you. great <laughs> summary of uh, a lot of issues that have beset the San Fernando Valley and its economic development in recent years. Um, Mr. Hernandez just closed with a really important point, I think, and that is how the Convention Center drives other forms of economic development in Southern California. And we've been wrestling with that issue now for as long as I've been in the Council. The whole discussion about AEG and the uh, you know, stadium development and all of that uh, has all been, in my view, not about football. It's been about improving the Convention Center as a vehicle for economic development. And throughout that whole discussion, uh, there was always the concern that the convention center as it stands now um, is not competitive with other major convention centers in other places because of lack of contiguous space and so infrastructure limitations. So given that reality, have any of you had a chance to think about w what should we be doing differently to maximize the economic benefits derived uh, from the Convention Center. Given its current limitations, until there's a plan B in place, until we start to really invest further money in the infrastructure itself, what can we be doing differently to make this a more vibrant and more effective economic engine? I'm a believer in the cliché that knowledge makes power. And I would like to see us do some work on what does our competition do? How do they do it? Why do they do it? And what makes them successful and what keeps them from being more successful? Uh, the old story of learning the next guy's best practices is the first step in making sure that you're implementing the best practices. Obviously, because I haven't sat on this body, I don't know what kind of research has been done, but that's where I would start. You know, let's find out what everybody else who we're in competition with, and it's a lot of competition and a lot of other municipalities and, and counties and even state governments really give a lot of support to their convention facilities and the surrounding area that those facilities are in. And, and I think we need to know what the, the key competitors are doing. That's where I would start. I think we're, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I think we're coming in at the right time in terms of the rebirth of downtown. And I think that if we use that and we use the new hotels that are coming up, as our basis for developing the convention center again, I think that's the key. And I think the, as Marty indicated, uh, reaching out to other centers around the country, and especially the new ones, and see why, they, why how, and where they're driving their, their uh, clients. I think that's, I think that's the approach we need to take. Show me the money. Show me the money. Show me the money. Um, <laughs> you got to understand the budget, and you got to be able to look at that budget that we currently have. Um, to see what has been done, what hasn't been done, um, to look at cost savings, uh, what can be done more effectively. So I would start there. Um, given that um, we generate a lot of the money through uh, the lease buyback, I think that you got to look at our current financial structure, what's working in that whole entire structure, what's not working. We can't be afraid to go outside of the box. Um, I know that we've been doing some things for a very long time, and I think that it's time to look at doing some things that we haven't done with regard to uh, philanthropy through public-private through public -private partnerships. I mean, really engaging them, not just talking about it, but really getting out into the community, looking at creative fundraising strategies to supplement that to which we already currently have in place. Great. I'll just give you a 
heads up about two small issues. You don't need to respond now. But just, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Mr. Hernandez. Yeah, you... Oh, I'll just ditto. I, oh, okay. I can't just say that. <laughs> so, um, especially, Mr. Cooper, since you've had the background with MPAA and so on, um, you should know that there have been many complaints over the years that the convention center has been one of the most difficult places to go in and film on location. Um, and that as many of us are working really hard to try to get film and television production back in Los Angeles, the convention center has been um, unwelcoming uh, in many respects. Now that's changed in recent years, much for the better, uh, but I just want to alert you to that fact because that's something that, that I'm going to hope that um, the leadership of the convention center continues to drive forward as a positive thing to bring the film and TV industry in there, even though it presents operational challenges sometimes, but really critical I, to the economic I'm development sorry. issue. Uh, Council Member, I, uh, I'd like to share with you the fact that f since 2001, one of my clients has been the Burbank Bob Hope Airport. Since 9-11, there was no outside filming allowed at the airport for security reasons. And just last year, the airport began to open up, and I was very involved and very instrumental in the outreach campaign to bring location managers to get the airport's uh, governance to be more welcoming. So that's an area where I have some specific current experience. I think I'd look to look at the, the cost-benefit analysis of our uh, investment and resource in the convention center. It really is a, a question of what, what benefits do we derive for the investment that we make. Uh, I know uh, one of the big discussions is the giving tax breaks to, uh, to developers. Uh, and, and the question is, okay, so what do we get out of it? Do we get good jobs? You know, if we, if we develop hotels, are those going to be good? Good jobs, or are they going to be low-pan jobs? It's uh, you, know, uh, the, you know, construction is always a good investment, but do we get local hire? Do we get uh, our people uh, working those jobs? Uh, so I, I want to look closely at those issues as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Please Thank start. you, and and I think. Uh, you commissioners come in at a very important time for the convention center as the city embarks on expanding the convention center, moving to what we call Plan B, which is since we did not get the football stadium, we're looking to expand the convention center. Um, one concern I have is that while we'll, we are playing catch up with other major cities, other cities continue to expand their conventions. San Diego just announced another hotel with expanded convention space uh, right adjacent to it. So they're moving up still providing additional space and amenities uh, and we're just playing catch up and I think we need to put that in exponential gear to even be at a place where we could be as competitive. The other thing too is um, as you go through this process I hope you get familiar with what's happening across the street and the renewed downtown LA. All down Figueroa from Olympic on south every one of those major parcels is uh, there's plans to redevelop those areas new hotels, uh, new condos. And so as we think about the convention center, let's not only think about it internally, but see how we could, uh, it relates to the surrounding area uh, with all the new development that is going on there. So as we're developing our plan B, let's think about what is developing across the street and how we integrate it with those areas as well. But I think it's an exciting time uh, to be on this commission because of the importance that this convention center plays to all of us to, for, for the economy in LA, as was mentioned. But I'm, I'm very confident that uh, we are in a trajectory to get back some of those conventions that should be here. No matter the glamour of Las Vegas and <laughs> all these other places, with everything happening in LA, we're just at, as attractive as the other, these other venues. We just got to provide them the space to do that. Um, so th there are, for example, the fashion district. We are one of the major areas in the world for fashion but yet some of our biggest fashion conventions uh, are elsewhere because we cannot provide them the space they would like to see. Um, and uh, as we move forward in this, I think eventually uh, with downtown booming and uh, keeping that going, uh, the convention center I think is the critical piece to really take downtown over the edge where we know it could really make, uh, be a destination point for people throughout the world. So thank you for your service. Thank you. I just want to make a comment. I think one of the things we have to look at is the vendors that are uh, involved in that center and see where there may be changes. And that's my background in uh, 
commercial real estate. Richard is looking for a trip to the Hawaii Convention yeah. Center to compel. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I think it's clear the, the uh, <clears throat> Convention and uh, exhibi Exhibition Center represent obstacles and opportunities. And I think we all are optimistic about the upside opportunities to really be an economic engine uh, in our city, uh, encouraging uh, other economic growth and development, not just around downtown, but citywide. Uh, and so I know that members of this committee uh, will be monitoring very closely and working with you in partnership to develop the kinds of programs and policies uh, that will help advance that kind of agenda forward. Uh, as I said, I think you all are eminently qualified, uh, and members, unless there's an objection, I don't, uh, I'd like to um, recommend them highly uh, to the council for approval. Second. Okay, it's been seconded and so ordered. So again, thank you for your, for your service, and we look forward to seeing you uh, in council. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you. Very you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Clerk, what's our next item? Uh, item number five is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Pekla Pila, Pila Vigian to the Industrial Development Authority Board of Directors for the term ending June 30th, 2016. Okay, we'll take, let's take five, six, and seven together. Item number six is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Mr. Moctezuma Esparza to the Industrial Development Authority Board of Directors for the term ending June 30th, 2015. And item number seven is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Lorette Healy to the Industrial Development Authority Board of Directors for the term ending June 30th, 2017. Thank you. Another fine group of Good afternoon. citizens willing to step up to the plate and step up to the table. And we appreciate that. Uh, again, I'm going to ask you all three to just make uh, brief comments and um, give our committee a chance to uh, who haven't had a chance to meet with you to ask a few questions and, and uh, to learn a little more about you and your interest and your commitment. And let's start with you, Ms. Healy. Me? Okay, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much, council members, and, and to, for meeting with us today and taking your time. Uh, it's a very valuable amount of time that you're devoting to, to uh, the mayor's appointments. And certainly I, I know that I echo the thoughts of anyone that is uh, being considered for a commission for the city of Los Angeles, that it's a, a high honor that comes with a tremendous amount of responsibility and hopefully as citizens we'll be able to take our expertise and, and contribute to to making uh, Los Angeles a better place. Um, with respect to the Industrial Development Authority, uh, it, is a, it is a tool really that um, in my humble view is, is under, has been underutilized uh, maybe for a variety of reasons, not all of them internal some of them are the market conditions, which are the current interest rates, um, more or less uh, create a disincentive for uh, folks to come for bonds uh, and the limits uh, on those bonds, uh, as far as our jurisdiction is concerned, is around $10 million, so it has a certain containment in terms of the applicants. The other issue, which I think oftentimes one runs into when doing business with the government are the regulatory matters that tend to delay the process and make it a very excruciating experience at times for the applicants uh, both and, and that perhaps as incoming commissioners we can review and take a look at and perhaps make some recommendations if there are any that uh, can expedite the process. And I think the third issue are the banks and private issuers that are willing to uh, provide the backing for these bonds Unlike other bonds, these are private issues. We're a conduit agency. Um, it's not Los Angeles City's monies per se, but it is having to take those approved applications and, and finding those who would be willing to back it. In today's economy, with interest rates being as low as they are, this becomes an underutilized body for that reason. Perhaps um, with my colleagues and those that serve on the commission, we might be able to find an opportunity to utilize uh, this commission a little bit more greatly and it will be an opportunity to talk to all of the council members about how we might accomplish that going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montezuma. Members of the council, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to appear. I've been privileged to uh, serve the City of Los Angeles as a commissioner uh, going back 35 years. So it is an honor to continue to find ways to be 
useful and meaningful to the citizens of Los Angeles. Although this particular authority is underutilized right now and is likely to continue to be underutilized as long as interest rates are low, I do believe that it is a platform, a forum, that can be used to speak to the general issue of access to capital, uh, both for uh, companies here in the Los Angeles area that are seeking to grow or to establish themselves, and also to address the issue of the lack of access to capital that uh, a Latino, African American, or Asian American, and women uh, companies face in this economy, and which is a continuing concern and a continuing problem. So the issue of greater participation and access to capital is something that I think that this commission can look at uh, and speak to and find a useful uh, purpose uh, for our time since the likelihood of issuing bonds is remote for the immediate future. There hasn't been a bond issuance since 2007. That's a while. So although it may not look like there is a great deal we can do, I think that this is potentially a very useful platform to address the issue of economic justice, access to capital, uh, minority participation, and how the city can support all of those agendas. I look forward to serving. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Pekla Pilovjian. Thank you for the opportunity to appear here today. I am a first-generation American. Uh, been here a long time. Um, uh, my background is in jewelry and real estate. Uh, we are uh, owners and representatives of the St. Vincent Jewelry Center, the biggest jewelry center in the western United States, if not the, the, the entire United States. I know a thing or two about that our strong suit is economic development, basically. I have seen uh, manufacturing leave the district when times were bad. And I've seen manufacturing go to China, and I understand the reasons why some of it is trickling back in. Uh, my understanding is that the Industrial Development uh, Commission is about creating jobs and bringing economic opportunities to all parts of the city, creating jobs where it's needed, uh, uh, finding low-cost financing for businesses in predominantly low-income districts probably, uh, although not all the time, but uh, predominantly. And uh, I think I have a strong background in trying to be able to help achieve that. With that, I ask for your support, and thank you for listening. Thank you. Well, I think it's clear that you all have a commitment to something that this committee is concerned about, uh, economic development and job creation. And to the extent um, that the... Um, that the uh, commission can be a platform for that, to encourage that discussion, to advance that discussion, to illuminate opportunities and possibilities. Uh, I think you'll find a strong partnership uh, with this committee uh, as we work with you in that in that vein. Uh, members, are there any questions? Seeing none. Uh, I just got to make a quick comment. Well, sorry, I just can't. That's all right. Mr. Chair. Don't, don't let the moment pass. Again, I want to uh, thank the nominees for their willingness to serve the city. Uh, obviously, um, increasing manufacturing <clears throat> in Southern California is one of the most critical priorities we have, particularly in the San Fernando Valley, uh, which has vast unmet opportunities for more investment in manufacturing. I'm so pleased that uh, two of our nominees have uh, experience in the in the valley. And of course, uh, Mr. Pilafjan, I've known for many years for his great leadership downtown uh, as well. And uh, Mr. Esparza, I just have to thank you for your contribution to telling the story of Los Angeles's recent history as well, because very often um, much of our modern history gets ignored, and uh, your work on Walkout, I think, was an important contribution to telling the full story of Los Angeles. And, I, and Milagro being field war was just a lot of uh, joy to watch, so <laughs> I just have to tell you, tell you how much I enjoyed your work. Thank you. Great. Well, without objection, we will uh, pass these nominees on with uh, full support. We know they'll do a great job, uh, not only for uh, this commission, but also for the city. Uh, we look forward to your service. Uh, any objection, members? Mr. Yes, Mr. Mr. Wizard. I thought since my 
colleague, Mr. Kikorn, brought it up, and, you know, walkout, not much has changed, right, Mr. Makasuma, in terms of public education. I know this is not the purview here, but it just struck me. And as we look at the work you've been doing to get more Latinos on the screen, not much has changed either. A report came out recently about how few Latinos are on the screen these days. So the struggle continues, right, Mr. Makasuma? Absolutely. Um, as my councilman, I appreciate your bringing that up. It's a proud member of the 14th District, where I live. Uh, yes, I'm the founder and chairman of the board of a charter school that is now in its eighth year uh, that is attempting to address the continuing problems of quality education and inspiring young children. It is definitely a challenge. And uh, in reference to Hollywood, I know that there is a great deal of interest in <coughs> keeping those Hollywood jobs here, and I support that. And at the same time, Hollywood is one of the most exclusionary industries in the United States. We are worse off today in terms of participation in Hollywood, in terms of mainstream stars, than we were 60 years ago. A recent Columbia study attested to that. It's called Out of the Picture by Dr. Francis Negron, if anybody cares to look it up. We don't have a single male Latino lead who can headline a major motion picture Yet 60 years ago, there was almost a dozen. Gilbert Rowland, Ricardo Montalban, Cesar Romero, Desi Arnaz, Fernando Lamas, Jose Ferrer, and others. You think about that, and you think about today, and we are worse off, both in front and behind the camera. <clears throat> so as we give this industry a lot of free tax money, we should be holding them accountable. Good point. That, I would echo that with respect to women in the industry as well, having come from the entertainment industry uh, and a member of the Directors Guild. Uh, I can tell you that it's a minority of, of people that work uh, in that industry um, and tend to be given second chances. I would echo that uh, oftentimes minorities, if they don't immediately succeed, are not given the second chances that other folks are given. And there is a disparity there that can potentially not be proven, but uh, it certainly exists. So I, I, I agree with you that uh, certain standards of equality and fairness should be met in any um, future legislation regarding tax credits. This seems like the right thing to do. Okay, so Industrial Development Authority and the media will draw, draw the connection. Again, we appreciate your commitment, your service. Uh, we look forward to uh, favorable consideration by the council. And uh, again, we appreciate your willingness to step up and serve. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you. Okay, members. Um, Mr. Clerk, what's our next item? Item number 19 is a motion, Wesson Bonin and LaBonge, relative to, to an instruction to the Chief Legislative Analyst and the City Administrative Officer to convene a working group of various city departments and stakeholder groups and prepare a comprehensive report on the sharing economy. Okay, uh, we've got several cards uh, on this topic. We're going to ask uh, um, members, uh, citizens to come forward. Uh, limit your comments to two minutes. Um, and I hope that uh, you can be brief and concise in that. Uh, let me call you up with Linda, Linda Price. Is it Linda? Is it Price or Pace? Linda from uh, Venice. Linda from Venice. Jane uh, Taguchi. David Owen. And David Juarez. You four will come forward this time. Thank you, Lydia Ponce from Venice. Um, I'm uh, not really favorable to the shared economy because it's not a lot has been defined and I know it's in the works. However, from what I'm seeing on the west side in my hometown, uh, working with the Affordable Housing Commission and other commissions, I hope that this body, whoever is um, put together uh, having the task to the shared economy plan uh, they must work with unions, uh, or this plan will fail because it's not going to be really shared. It will perpetuate more of the same economics, 1%, 99%. The shared economy is not describing what uh, about shared profit, quality of life for the workers. Uh, 
The change in the development in our city is pushing low-income workers to live further away from their original communities, and they'll have to travel several hours to work downtown LA or the west side. We all know that there are banks that have redlined and denied loans uh, in the recent past for small businesses for people who live here. And um, there are pockets of poverty and neighborhoods and communities that can only afford to be gentrified, relocated, paid to move, but further away. Um, last I checked, people are not disposable. There are no checks and balances right now within city planning uh, department, and we're losing a lot of our affordable units, the rent control and uh, to the Ellis Act and to basically laws that exist that do not have teeth to enforce them like the uh, Mellow Act on the coast in the entire state of California. The affordable housing is never found feasible within our county. Um, it's just exemption after exemptions offered and um, right now there's a lot of Ill illegal activity as far as short-term rentals all over our city. Um, so basically I sit before you to ask that you really take a look at the Affordable Housing Commission and um, work with them because the housing, we're not going to have any housing left for veterans, elderly, or disabled, or let alone low income. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your comment. Uh, Ms. Taguchi? Uh, yeah, I'm here to give you my real world uh, experience. I want to remind the city of L.A. Uh, that uh, law explained in Alan Bell's memo dated March 19th regarding short-term rentals. A few months ago, a couple bought the house across the street. They immediately started renting the house for three to four days at a time. The house was rented to a UCLA fraternity group, tourists, a wedding group from Texas, a group from San Diego, a company retreat, people from France. I see people with luggage, a caterer, cleaning lady, cars parked and filled the streets. And this is in Silver Lake. Well, who, where I have lived for 18 years, my husband and I, and he has born and lived in Silver Lake all these years. And, you know, we love Silver Lake. But after this, it has turned into uh, an Airbnb group rental across the street that sleeps 12 people. The same couple owns another Airbnb rental in Los Feliz, which they have advertised for over a year. City officials have told us to document the goings-on at the property and phone-in disturbances. We have done so but the owners are still not stopped. The local city attorney says we need to direct, direct evidence. We, they need direct evidence, and it will take time. Well, last week I discovered direct evidence. I've done everything that the city has requested me to report this illegal activity. City of LA, it's your turn to prosecute the owners of the house. This couple has personally threatened me, phoned in a false claim with police against my neighbor, and now, yesterday I found out I've been sued as a result of the city's failure to take any action to enforce the zoning ordinance. It is retaliation and intimidation against us because we are threatening their illegal income. My guess is that this particular couple has made at least $30,000 in illegal uh, rental. I'm here to ask the city of LA to not allow this unspoken moratorium of the illegal short-term rental while they're studying the issue of the shared economy. Put neighbors and first and let's clean the house. I haven't talked with this couple since they threatened me on June 5th. But the last thing they said to me was, quote, this is my $2 million house, and you're not going to tell me what to do with it, and no one is. Is this what you call the sharing economy? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. David Owen. <laughs> thank you. On. Uh, Chairman Price, members of the committee, my name is David Owen on behalf of Airbnb. Um, I'm uh, here mostly just to thank uh, the makers of the motion, uh, President Wesson and Councilman Bonin, uh, for taking the lead with this important issue. We know there are, this raises a number of interesting and fascinating issues as the economy changes and the way that um, folks in the world engage in, in tourism and travel. Uh, so we're here uh, to indicate our interest and willingness and excitement to work with the city of Los Angeles as you begin studying and understanding understanding uh, all of the issues involved, and particularly uh, for the focus of this committee, the economic benefits that we know uh, that this activity and the sharing economy generally bring to the city of Los Angeles. Since 2008, nearly 250,000 guests have come to visit the city of Los Angeles using our platform, um, coming here to live like what a local. Number how many? Uh, 250,000. 
since uh, we were founded in 2008. Um, you're going to hear today briefly from a few members of our community, several neighborhood council members, um, and other folks who will share their personal experiences for why this is very important to them and the economic benefits that they individually uh, are, are able to realize through this type of service as well as the uh, benefits that their guests and their activity make uh, in their communities as well. Um, I strongly urge you to approve this motion and to move forward with studying the impacts and really understanding uh, the issues. And we are here uh, to work as your partners along with the CAO and the CLA as you uh, consider, and all other stakeholders, um, and there are many, um, as you consider these issues. I would ask for one amendment um, as you uh, uh, move forward with studying these issues. The motion um, uh, combines a study of the transportation as well as the shareable housing uh, companies and platforms, and I would encourage you um, to split those or to consider them separately as this process moves forward. Uh, they both raise a lot of interesting and distinct issues, um, and, and if nothing else, for the sake of, of shorter meetings, um, you may want to, uh, to look at those individually. So I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Juarez. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Juarez, and I'm here representing the Apartment Association in Greater Los Angeles, AGLA. And I'm here to express our support for the resolution, for the motion. And I would like to ask the committee to invite AGLA Department Association to the working group once it's created. All right. Nice and simple. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next up, Carl Hammond, Hope Arnold, Vanessa Johnson, and Beverly Kenworthy. Step up and state your piece. Carl? Uh, Airbnb is a very sophisticated PR script which frames this argument as the new sharing economy versus the old stodgy hotel chain economy. The true nature of this argument is for-profit corporations like Airbnb versus quality of life for Los Angeles residents. The sharing economy does exist, but it's always non-profit. Organizations like Craigslist or FreeCycle, not multi-billion dollar for-profit companies like Airbnb. Airbnb isn't lobbying this committee in an effort to help Los Angeles residents share. It's lobbying you in order to profit at the expense of Los Angeles residents that you represent. As my neighborhood has learned, Los Angeles needs to limit and regulate short-term rentals. Four months ago, investors bought the house across the street. This single-family home is now used exclusively as a short-term rental for large groups and events, events like a two-day frat party. The property owner hosts have intimidated neighbors and threatened legal action against those who complain. Thirty neighbors have signed a petition. We've consulted with the police, our councilman's representatives, a lawyer from the city attorney's office and LADBS. Despite all our efforts, the city refuses to enforce the existing law, a law written to protect neighbors like us. Now this committee is taking steps towards abolishing that law and those protections. Portland has recently restricted short-term rentals to 90 days per year for owners who live on the property at least nine months out of the year. That's a start. A resident property owner who rents out their house four times a year for parties is an inconvenience, maybe an annoyance, but lack of regulation would allow these non-resident investors to rent to a new group of throwers, party throwers every week. That's not annoying, that's unacceptable. As you consider this motion today, you're probably feeling pressure from the lobbying groups. Please remember that you do not represent the companies, you represent the people of Los Angeles, like me and my neighbors, and we want our nice, quiet residential neighborhoods back. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, what's your name? Carl Hammond. Okay, Ms. Arnold. Hello, my name is Hope Arnold Taylor, and I'm on the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. And uh, I'm also an owner of two small businesses in Los Angeles, and I myself am a home sharing uh, host, if you will. Uh, home sharing allowed me, myself, to keep my home. It was underwater. I went down with the ship. And uh, now I am above ground again. And um, not only have I myself seen growth in my home, but in my business and in the surrounding neighborhood in tourism dollars and uh, diversity that is much needed in our neighborhoods. Uh, travelers, um, the art industry coming back to Los Angeles, artists need places to stay too. And in places like Silver Lake, there are no hotels, there are no hostels, and there are no motels. So um, it's a much needed service. Uh, let's see. 
I did want to quickly say, um, I, re I wanted to briefly point out that for me anyway, as a homeowner, I live there on the property. I rent out my room and sometimes even sleep on the couch. So um, it is a single family home, but Airbnb is what I use occasionally. I use others as well, but um, it provides a service that I can't get on my own from Craigslist. It vets people for me. It gives me um, insurance that I otherwise couldn't afford to have on top of the insurance that I have. And it uses social media links and stuff so that I can see who I'm getting and where they're coming from and if there's any commonality. And, and I, I certainly don't have partiers at my house. But um, I think, yeah, I think that's about it. I just really want to show my support for it and tell you how much it's meant to me personally. And, and many people that I, I know have, I've encouraged to look into it because they themselves were either losing their home, including about four or five of my neighbors who quite do, support it as well. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Mrs. Johnson? Hi, my name is Vanessa Johnson, and thank you for the opportunity to speak before this board. Um, my situation is a little bit different. I'm a part of the Airbnb e shared economy. It allows me to stay at home and take care of my husband, who is terminally ill and dying of cancer. So it provides me the opportunity to earn a living and be a caregiver at the same time. I also like to bring an attention to this board that I live in a community that is portrayed very negatively in the uh, media. When my guests come from around the world and stay at my house, they get a total different appearance of my neighborhood and appreciate the ability to see a different aspect of what my neighborhood is represented in the media. Um, it brings my neighbors together. They all appreciate um, the fact that people from all over the world are staying in our neighborhood, and they all join in um, welcoming the neighbors um, that come in, and they treat them as neighbors. Um, I am also a part of my neighborhood council, and my neighborhood council um, is also appreciative of Airbnb and also try to learn more about um, bringing more economy into an area that doesn't get economy from travel in Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, I'm just touching my knee. My, um, also, have a question afterwards, though. Yes. Also, i like to bring attention to the fact that um, it without Airbnb, it would be a hardship and um, I need the income that it comes. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Oh. Yes. But what area did you say you were from? Or where do you I live, live um, part of South Central Los Angeles. Okay. I live right off the 105 freeway between Maine and San Pedro. And what area? Silver Lake. Silver. And the gentleman back there that you spoke, what area were you? Do you reside? Silver Lake. Silver Lake as well? Okay. And have there been any complaints around... Your... There has been none, and I, like I said, I'm, I'm surrounded, maybe I'm just on a lucky hill, I don't know, but I'm surrounded with people who are not just grateful for it, but excited about it, and I have the same experience. Um, oh my gosh, we met your guests, they were so cool. I mean, you know, the only, one time someone dumped um, a bag of trash in the wrong set of trash cans, <laughs> and that was it, and I was like, oh, make sure they don't do that again. And, I mean, we talked to each other, and we we're neighborly. And I think that's important. And I think there is some onus on the people who own the homes, but I don't think it has to do with the sharing economy or the or the individual companies that are within the sharing economy. I think it has to do with. Individual but companies. you you are all aware the South Central don't get travel uh, business coming to South Central Los Angeles, but now through Airbnb, and my 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 guests are getting a different attitude about what South Central is portrayed as. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes, My name uh, is uh, Beverly Kenworthy. I'm with the California Apartment Association here in Los Angeles. We're a statewide um, organization. We represent property owners across the state. Um, and this is an issue that we are looking at very closely throughout the state. Right now, I know San Francisco is talking about this in terms of the multifamily industry. As you know, the multifamily industry is highly regulated. Landlord-tenant law is extremely complicated. Um, and there's tremendous liability issues for property owners and for tenants who um, rent out their, um, you know, rent out a bedroom or rent out their units without permission from the property owner. Um, there's, 
you know, it's a very serious uh, lease violation if that is in your lease. Um, and when there are problems, um, you know, who's liable for those? Um, we think it's a complicated issue, and um, we are um, looking at it at all angles. And so we are um, happy to um, work as a stakeholder uh, on this issue. We know there's a number of considerations, and uh, just know that um, we're taking a look at this very seriously and are going to be active at all the local levels um, throughout the state and um, in Sacramento. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for your comments. <clears throat> We've got three more cards. Matthew Desario, Bill Wilson, and Heather Carson. Matthew. Uh, hi, my name is Matthew Desario. I'm currently a Region 6 representative from the Neighborhood Council in Silver Lake. Uh, I'm in support of the motion to create the work group. I'm a current representative, like I said, and um, I really feel that um, it's important for someone like me who is a local business owner, I employ three employees, to have my voice heard. Um, I'm personally a supporter of the sharing economy. I can't speak for the Neighborhood Council. Um, and the reason I'm a supporter is I've been educated on some of the many benefits that the sharing economy can provide. Uh, during the most recent Neighborhood Council election cycle, this became one of the primary concerns to stakeholders in our community. Uh, for people that are engaged in the sharing economy, will our local government, um, you know, find some way to regulate and improve the economic behavior that we're already engaging in? And that, I think that's something important to understand. This is, uh, this is something that people are already doing. And... On the other side, people that are uh, not in support of the sharing economy, uh, th they said, what is my outlet? Um, what do I do when there's a problem? Uh, is this something that's inherent with the sharing economy? Or is this the case of any economy being an opportunity for a bad neighbor to demonstrate themselves as a bad neighbor? Um, I created a petition uh, in my community of Silver Lake, and I was able to get 1,000 people to sign it in, in favor of the sharing economy. And that's different flavors. That's Uber and Lyft. That's Airbnb. That's even Craigslist. Um, I actually disagree. I think that uh, Mr. Hammond made a good point that uh, there's a difference between Craigslist and Airbnb, or I would even say a, 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 an easier distinction would be Craigslist and, and eBay. They do similar things, but Craigslist is anonymous. It's not as safe. And the ability to regulate that Craigslist market is much more difficult, whereas uh, Airbnb and eBay, we have the ability to set taxes, to bring in revenue to the to the city, we have the ability to make it as safe as possible for our community and also to have some type of penalty for people who don't comply. So thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. What community do you, do you come from? I live in Silver Lake and I have a, a Silver Lake based business with three employees and I'm also on the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. Very good. Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Phil Wilson. I live at 3418 Huxley Street. I've lived there for 19 years. That's in Councilman LeBlanc's district. I also am the president and CEO of the Black Ace Institute, which is located at 1800 West 8th Street. That is in Councilman Hurt Wesson's district. Uh, I also am a former employee of the city. I was an ACE coordinator for the city of Los Angeles under Mayor Bradley. Uh, I am here to support the motion uh, on a number of grounds. I understand that this is the Economic Development Committee. And so very quickly, I'd like to give you four examples of economic development relative to the shared economy. Uh, as I said, I work for the Black Ace Institute. We are a not-for-profit. Uh, you all know uh, what the recent economy has done across the board, but particularly in not-for-profits. One of the things that we've had to do at the Black Ace Institute is, a, is to look at salaries. And one of the things that we've done is we've frozen my salary uh, at the Black Ace Institute. And the shared economy through Airbnb has allowed me to continue to do the work uh, without needing to have regular increases in salary. That's number one. Number two, my partner was laid off from the airlines three years ago, uh, and because of our ability to have shared economy, we were able to afford for him to go back to school to be retrained and to re-enter the economy. Uh, number three is a more personal one. Uh, as I look around this room, uh, some of us are in the squeeze generation. We have challenges with our children. We have challenges with my parents. My parents were in threat of losing their home, uh, and because uh, 
I have ability to diversify my income, I now have been able to pr pr support them so they did not lose their home. Number four, in the local economy, through the work that I do with my Airbnb, I'm able to support local businesses like our local dry cleaners, like developing lists so that my guests can go to the local grocery stores, support the local restaurants that are in our communities, and even as recently as today, support the rental car companies that are in our neighborhoods. So the shared economy is not just a benefit for those of us who are working in this, who are using our homes as a way to support, uh, su supplement our incomes or to keep our homes, but also support the other businesses in our communities. Hi, my name Thank is... Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Ms. Carson? Sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Heather Carson. I'm an at-large rep on the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council and a member of the Silver Lake Urban Design and Preservation Committee. I'm here to voice my personal support of the motion to convene a working group on the sharing economy. As a struggling freelance artist in the theater in the 80s in New York, if I couldn't have sublet my apartment when I got a gig out of town for three weeks, I wouldn't have survived. Back then, we put an ad in the Village Voice and took our chances. These new home sharing sites make the experience safer because you can vet a potential host or guest based on the feedback from users. I support the regulation of responsible short-term rentals. It seems silly to tell a homeowner that they can't rent their house for three weeks in the summer while on vacation. On the other hand, I don't support absent developers that swoop in and buy four properties and turn them into mini hotels. I believe we can find a balance somewhere in the middle. I currently rent out my apartment in New York for two to three months at a time, for which I pay the state of California income taxes. Being able to do so has kept me from being a, uh, going under and becoming a burden to the state of California. Each host receives a 1099, so must declare the income on their taxes, and the TOT can also track down hosts in this manner. I carefully select my tenants with consideration for my neighbors. My neighbors have made friends and invited guests for Christmas dinner and even visited them in Europe. The income received allowed me to take time uh, off of work to care for my mother in her last years as she succumbed to dementia. In addition to the economic impact, there is a great quality of life impact. I urge you to support this motion. Thank you. Any other cards this time? Thank you for your, for your testimony. I think uh, it certainly is clear that the uh, sharing economy is here, here to stay. Uh, we've seen uh, interesting examples in transportation and in housing. Uh, and again, um, the purpose of this motion is to convene a working group of departments and stakeholders to help flesh these issues out. I think the comments that everyone made were, were valid, uh, certainly reasonable, uh, and worthy of further, further discussion and review as the city um, along with other municipalities around this country, try to figure out how it fits in and how uh, we benefit not only those who are hosting or those who are providing these services, but the city as well. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's our challenge. Uh, members, any, any comments? Yeah, but let me let uh, Ms. Martinez go first. I know we don't have staff here, but just an observation just based on some of the comments, but you know, and maybe some of you are, some of us grapple with a different type of shared economy in our districts. I know we've heard the, the illegal vending issue here before in committee. Um, we have an array of issues in some of our parts of our neighborhoods that include illegal vending, uh, garage sales, um, the taco trucks. I mean, there's all kinds of things that goes on in some of our neighborhoods, very different from the communities that some of you spoke about. So I'm wondering, and the reason I was asking if staff was going to be here, is is there a way to look at these issues as well? I know we've talked about, some folks mentioned the affordable housing piece, the transportation piece, but there's other types of industries, not only the socially accepted industries that we are now talking about. We are grappling with a bunch of other things that have been going on for many, many, many years. And it's only now that it's become cool and hip <laughs> to buy food off a truck, but it wasn't so maybe 10 years ago. So I'm just thinking about how are we going to grapple with these other types of industries that are also part of the shared economy? Good, good, good question, Councilwoman. Uh, as you know, this committee is going to be hearing a report on street vending, uh, food, clothing, and anything else that's vended on the street. And I think it's, again, an, an ongoing uh, effort of uh, this committee to kind of grapple with it as we figure out what the policy should be. Um, obviously, the policy of not having a policy is, is a it doesn't serve anybody. And so hopefully uh, uh, this will be a collaborative effort uh, with, the, with departments and stakeholders to come back um, 
with a uh, with a report that focuses on at least two streams, the housing piece and also the transportation piece. Uh, but certainly that's not the exclusive uh, discussion this committee is going to be having on that issue. Other comments? Mr. Wizar. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just wanted to announce that we will be hearing this item in the Planning, Land Use, and Management Committee as well. Our intention is, if my colleagues agree at that committee, to forward this to the full council. Um, uh, if it should be forwarded here as well um, to set up this working group. I think when we have items like this that um, perhaps need some regulation, uh, as we hear from community members, um, that's the uh, best way to go about it, to set up the working group. The Plum Committee will focus on any land use issues that may, uh, be, may or may not be applied uh, to any new regulations uh, that may come up, but um, we will do that as quickly as possible, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I had the same instinctive reaction that Ms. Martinez uh, talked about because of the, <clears throat> I mean, everybody here spoke today uh, pretty much about home sharing, for, for better or for worse. But the motion is directed at the sharing economy. Now, I'm over 50. I don't have the first idea what that phrase means. I don't have the first idea what it means. And if we ask our staff to do a comprehensive report about the sharing economy, then we might, in my view, um, we've kind of lost control of any focus on the issue that everybody came here to speak about. Um, are we going to include everything about gardening in our front yard and sharing grocery, uh, groceries with neighbors? Are we going to include food trucks? Are we going to include um, you know, the transportation issues? I, I think that if we want to address these issues, we should focus on these issues and talk about home sharing. Um, and certainly, as we heard from the speakers today, there are benefits to many. There are potential detriments to many. And it makes sense to have a comprehensive report about home sharing and its potential impact and a potential regulatory scenario that can help to address those things. So um, in my view, I, I would suggest making this motion specific to home sharing. Um, I think even Airbnb suggested separating transportation from, from home sharing. I think that makes great sense. I would even make it a little bit more focused and just say this motion relates to home sharing and to all the land use issues that you'll deal with in, in Plum as well. And then the other suggestion I would, ha I would have is a kind of a minor one, but the rec recommended action number one talks about the potential economic benefits that the sharing economy would have aside from the breadth of sharing economy, I would also say that rather than presupposing potential benefits, we should say potential economic impact. There are positive impacts, there are negative impacts. And the whole point of doing a review of this is to determine, you know, what those impacts are and how we can best, uh, uh, best um, maximize the benefit and reduce the detriment. Um, you know, one, one person's sharing economy could be another person's underground economy. And, and I think that's what we, to Ms. Martinez's point, that's the sort of thing that we want to try to avoid um, falling into. So, so I would suggest narrowing this motion to home sharing and making the you know, appropriate changes in language to, uh, to narrow its, its focus so that we can actually have a comprehensive discussion about those issues uh, without the sideshow that will come with when we bring in all the other stuff, with transportation and, and everything else. And then let's um, deal with it from an objective, neutral starting point of what are the impacts, not what are the benefits, what are the impacts. Well, that certainly was not the, uh, I think, the exact intent of the motion. However, uh, it is before our committee, and uh, if we choose to uh, amend it or change it, we have the uh, the prerogative to do so. Um, I, I think uh, the idea of the of the working group uh, was to focus on housing and transportation. Uh, that was the understanding. I think that the authors had uh, and uh, and their desire. But if there's a desire to make some other change, I guess now it's time to do it. Mr. We, yeah, we um, we would like to make a technical revision, actually, just to form um, to instruct the CAO and CLA to form the work, working group. Um, but we wouldn't uh, forward the uh, the revisions, the specific revisions, to the city clerk. I'm sorry. You, are you wouldn't? Are you what? 
What, what about the revisions? The, uh, we're, we're recommending to, um, to make some technical revisions to the motion, and that would be to form a working group. Um, and that would be uh, to instruct the CAO and CLA to form a working group to provide us with a little bit more flexibility to include other departments that are not named, um, other departments as needed. All right. Um, Mr. Wizar. Well, yeah, I, I'm a, a bit of a loss now because obviously, the, as I read the motion now, it does talk broadly about the shared economy, but yet the stakeholders who are interested and involved in having a solution to one set of problems we've heard today, it's very, um, you know, very, very narrow. So I, I'm not sure if that was the intent of the makers of the motion, and I'm not sure if they're in here, that anybody from those offices are here. Uh, because certainly uh, it's going to ask for, we will get a working group with a very different outcome and study than if we leave it as is or just address this one issue. I, I just kind of realized that as I'm reading the motion, so I'm not quite sure what the intent of the makers were. Was it just for home sharing or the shared economy? That's uh, well, uh, the, the conversation we had with the, uh, the president's office, at least, said it, the focus was on the shared economy being the housing and, and transportation. Uh, transportation. Okay. And that uh, subgroups would be created on those two specifically. So, but, but oddly, if you look at page two of the motion, among the, the many departments of the city that are being asked to participate in the working group, the Department of Transportation is not one of them. Right. So the Department of Transportation has primary jurisdiction over all uh, cab and ride-sharing right. issues. So I, I, and I think that was the purpose of the clerk's. Correct. That is the purpose of the um, amendment. The cor correction, yeah. To bring transportation in. Well, I don't want to stand in the way of, of what the makers want to do, but I would at least recommend that we bifurcate these two things and, and have them be treated distinctly because I, I mean, what do they have in common, even? I, I don't know. The fact that somebody uses a computer to find them it, mm -hmm. I, or, or a smartphone, I, I don't know. So, I mean, they're, they're, the array of issues are entirely distinct and. Um, other than the fact that it, it has the potential, well, anyway, I don't want to continue to belabor the point, but I think even Airbnb's letter acknowledged those <clears throat> should be treated separately, and that, that would be my well, I think the officers were aware of that. Let, let's, uh, my recommendation is that we pass it, uh, that we send it on uh, with the understanding that those two issues will be addressed separately in, in subgroups, and that was the conversation that we had uh, with the officers. Okay. Okay. So without objection, we will... Uh, you will approve the, amend the motion as amended, um, referring it on to the CLA and the um, um, appropriate city departments for review. And any of you stakeholders that have an interest in being part of this process, uh, you can contact the clerk's office, you can contact our office uh, to make sure you are informed and um, available to participate uh, in hearings as they go forward. So without objection, that will be the order. Any more business before us at this time, Mr. Clerk? Uh, that concludes the uh, agenda. Okay. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your participation, for your attendance and participation. Did you know what sharing economy was? Did you know what sharing economy was? I read.